thank you for inviting me. Uh, I come from the Canadian Liver Foundation, and I'm here to speak about what we do and who we are, and I will touch a little bit on, on the disease itself. So, Canadian Liver Foundation was fun founded in 1969, and it is the first organization in the world that was devoted to providing support for research and education into the causes, diagnosis, prevention, and treatment of all forms of liver disease, including alpha-1 antitrypsin. So, <clears throat> as you can see, today we are bringing liver research to life by raising funds to promote liver health, improve public awareness, fund research, and provide support to individuals affected by liver disease. We provide funding to Canadians uh, and to Canadian scientists to pursue research. Uh, we address the needs of patients and their families. We promote awareness and better understanding of liver disease. And we also advocate for improved health for all Canadians. We still have a lot of challenges. And um, there are over 100 different liver diseases. There's no cure for many, still. We have a huge problem. It is one in four Canadians. We estimate that it is one in four Canadians who have liver disease. Uh, basically, that's 8.6 million. Majority, the majority of people who have liver disease today, they have fatty liver, uh, viral hepatitis, autoimmune diseases, and then other including alpha-1 antitrypsin. There are very few liver specialists. Uh, they're primarily uh, located with uh, university health hospitals with, uh, who specialize in, uh, who, who do research and who are affiliated with universities. Um, gastroenterology is the primary specialty and hepatology is basically a subspecialty of gastroenterology. So very few doctors actually go and specialize in liver disease. And there's still a very huge uh, stigma attached to liver disease. That is one of our biggest challenges is stigma that is basically related to the issue of alcohol-related liver disease, uh, injection drug use, other things that is still perceived as your fault disease. So, just to say a little bit, we already discussed this this morning, but what is alpha-1 antitrypsin? It's a protein that is produced in the liver. It protects the lungs from enzymes produced by inflammatory cells, and these enzymes are aimed at killing bacteria but can cause damage to lung tissue if not controlled. So, it is a hereditary liver disease, it occurs in approximately 1 in 1,200 to 1,000, uh, sorry, 2,000 live births. Uh, liver produces abnormal alpha-1 antitrypsin molecules. Uh, and these abnormal alpha-1 antitrypsin molecules, they, stuck, they get stuck in the liver, in liver cells. And this disturbs liver function and leads to liver disease. So, what is this alpha-1 antideficiency? I mean, I, I'm just going to repeat what you have heard this morning. So, failure of alpha-1 antitrypsin uh, to leave the liver leads to a decreased amount of this protein in blood, and then this leads further to uh, lungs, causes tissue damage, particularly in those exposed to chronic uh, inhaled irritants like cigarette smoke and other things. And most people de develop significant lung disease in adulthood. So risk of developing liver disease, 15% of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency will show signs of liver disease in, uh, in, in childhood. Half of them will recover but continue to be deficient 
putting them at risk of future complications, including lung, liver, and skin disease. I apologize for the typo. I think I, s I did send a corrected version, but it didn't make it. Uh, the remaining 50% will develop liver fibrosis uh, and are at risk of cirrhosis and liver failure during childhood. And adults may also develop liver inflammation and damage, liver damage. So symptoms and signs of liver disease. So as an infant, how it will present with in, in childhood uh, or, and how the, the doctors can look for it. Uh, in an infant who has jaundice that is caused by inflammation and obstruction of liver cells, and you have heard this morning Dr. Wong speak about neonatal hepatitis. Uh, as a child or adult, of any age who has increased liver enzymes, or as a child or adult of any age who has complications of liver cirrhosis, including jaundice, ascites, and variceal bleeding. And again, you have heard this morning about the, the complications of advanced liver disease from Dr. Wong. So treatment uh, in in, when liver disease develops, maintain liver function and prevent complications by good protein, energy, nutrition, vitamin supplementation, management of ascites, management of portal hypertension, and screening for varices. And in the extreme cases, when liver failure happens, then liver transplantation may be an indication and a way of treatment. I will skip this slide because you have heard about that this morning, so anyhow. Uh, what I want to also say about the Canadian Liver Foundation is that we do have a public patient professional education. We have programs uh, for patients, uh, liver helpline in English, French, Cantonese, Mandarin, toll-free line, as most of you have, a local line. We have our liver.ca, which is our website a lot of information, a lot of print materials. I have brought some of them for you here. Uh, we also organize liver health public forums, professional conferences for education. In the area of patient support and advocacy, uh, we have a program called Living with Liver Disease. We have a patient support network. And in the area of advocacy, we also help with submissions to Health Canada and provincial drug plans, uh, providing patient input and testimonials uh, during the process of drug approval. In the area of liver research, uh, we, have, uh, we have funded a lot of research. We are the largest uh, charitable funder of liver research in Canada, outside of government, outside of NI, uh, CIHR, the Canadian Institutes for Health Research. Um, we have invested millions of, of, of dollars in liver research, including alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. We have annual grant program. We uh, actually have competition every year for operating grants, graduate studentships, and summer studentships. And we also participate in many collaborative research projects in area of liver transplantation, viral hepatitis, and other diseases. Uh, I'm proud to say that at some point in time, every single liver doctor in Canada has been supported by us in the process and during their career. Uh, liver Helpline, it's a toll-free line. You can call us or you can email us with your questions. We provide these answers in several languages. We do uh, receive about 100 phone and 70 emails per month. And we also train nursing students. We have nurses, volunteers, and also national office staff who respond to these inquiries. I want to say a little bit more about our Living with Liver Disease program. It was first launched in 1995. It is a structured program. These are facilitated monthly meetings from October to June. I have also brought some information about that if you're interested. 
uh, open, anyone can attend, uh, no cost, no need to sign in advance, and location is accessible by public transit, so the lo Toronto location is the North York Civic Center. There is actually a meeting on Monday, and it is going to be about nutrition and what constitutes good nutrition. It will be presented by a registered dietitian. So in this program, we, have, we invite guest speakers who are experts in their fields. So they talk about liver disease, about treatment, prevention, ABCs of viral hepatitis, healthy eating, how to keep positive, how to include some physical activity in your, in your life. We also talk about complementary therapies, even though we do not endorse any. Uh, liver is very vulnerable to injury, so it's very important, actually, to if you're taking any alternative therapies, to talk to your doctor about that. But we always provide a, an overview of, of, of what is alternative therapy, because there's a huge interest in this area how to navigate healthcare system, and also we have what we call peer support and sharing sessions without any speakers where we have facilitated discussion about issues and concerns of those who are in attendance. We also have what we call peer support network. This is when one-on-one -on -one counseling is required. It's a national uh, network of people who have volunteered to participate and to provide help to others. So what we do is basically matching by disease, by age, by gender. We try to do that. Not, it's not always possible. We also then, of course, do recruitment and training of, of our volunteer peers. Uh, we have to update and maintain record of you know, who they are and how to reach them. And of course, to ensure confidentiality at all times. So benefits, of course, benefits of this program is that, first of all, you are not alone. Uh, there is, you can ask your very personal questions. You can share any issues. There's no stigma. There's no, no non-judgmental, of course. And you are giving and you're receiving help because if you received help, you will also be giving it back. And we see that very often especially in the area of end-stage liver disease. Most of our counseling and uh, request for support comes from people who are at the end stage of liver disease and require very, very special care. And very often we hear that there are no, there's no help in hospitals because they, they're released. They, they, they cannot be in, in, in hospitals. They come home and then uh, their family members need to take care of them. And that concludes my presentation, so thank you very much. <laughs>